Let's talk about breaking copy geom references between components and skeletal references of published geometry. I'm going to start off by saying this is something that is a little bit controversial. Um, the entire philosophy of top-down design really kind of depends on these relationships existing. However, there are situations within our customer base where they get to a point where they don't want to have those relationships anymore. Typically, at a final release or they're trying to disassociate all of the references basically streamline their pdm and reuse process uh, by breaking these relationships uh, once product has been designed or they want to prevent people from accidentally making changes uh, by ensuring that a fixed design once it hits a design freeze they need to go put in the details on components but the top level design is finished for example a class a surface model so in this particular case i have a a very simple model that's serving as our skeleton We'll consider this to be kind of class A surfaces of what needs to be generated. And we have a couple of published geometries uh, within this that are going to be used as references for building up the upper and lower portions of this particular design. So if we take a look at this cross section here, you can see that we have the outer geometry uh, driven by the skeleton and also maybe the lip interface for how this uh, component has been developed. And the guts of this has still yet to be designed to the layout, but let's say that just industrial engineering is happy with the shape and somebody's decided that we're going to have a standard interface that everybody kind of uses. So um, to do this manually is, is really kind of trivial. All you have to do is come in and, and right click and say update control and say no dependency. It'll give you this warning. If you do click on this, uh, this will disassociate the copy geometry from the skeleton model, meaning there will be no more dependency there. So changes to the skeleton would not be reflected upon regeneration. Uh, and that is problematic for some people. Uh, so that this is typically why we don't recommend you do this. However, um, if you do need to do that, that's the way to do it, is to just come in and manually do that. If we want to just kind of confirm what we're looking at here, if we look at the reference view, we can see that that particular uh, features reference that published geometry, and that's going all the way back to the skeleton model to look at the features that are kind of referenced there. So to purge that or to disassociate that, um, the easiest thing to do is to actually run a map key for that. And you could easily record a map key to come in and select this geometry, do the update control, you know, go through the dialogues and it would be done. Uh, but that's a little bit more problematic if you're, if you're dealing with multiple features like we have in this case. So in this particular example, each of these models has a couple of copy geometry references that are in, are in these models that are referencing the skeleton model above. And you can actually automate the cleanup of this. And we're going to use Excel to do this. And it's going to be a combination of Excel, uh, NitroCell, and also generating a dynamic map key to kind of pull this off. So how would this work? So typically, you would come in and you'd say Control F. And you say, well, I'm looking for, let's say, uh, seven, what is it, seven, five, six. So I do a find now, and it would say, okay, there's your seven, five, six geometry. I could select that, and then I can continue on my map key to kind of go through my things. And that's great and wonderful for doing one off type of searches. But if I've got multiple things I need to identify, it gets a little bit more difficult to go through that with a map key. So we're actually going to use Excel to do this. And I'm going to start off by creating a table. In this table, we're going to call feet IDs, and we're going to write that to wow tab. And in NitroCell, we do have the ability to actually uh, query the types, uh, query features by their type and report their IDs back. So I'm just going to tell it to go to every model that's in session, and I want to copy geom. So I put wildcards in there to just kind of generically pick up based on the feature type. And we're going to write that out to that feature IDs table that we just wrote there, or that we're going to create. So when I run this, you'll notice that it's created our tab, and it has also written out the um, the models and also the feature IDs that are involved that have copy geometry with them. So that's a that's an Excel table that's been written. You can see here under the design that's called feet IDs. Now I've already recorded a map key that that we'll go through and do the exact sequence that we need to do. The only thing it needs is this geom feed ID text field that I put in here as a placeholder. And I've, and I've created this table called map key table that has this in anticipation of more map keys later, but fundamentally I've got one called remove link and we're going to use this to kind of join this table here and kind of generate a new table of that information. 
To do that, we're going to use Power Query. And Power Query comes with uh, Excel. So I'm going to click into this table for the map keys, and I'm going to I'm going to create a connection to that. We're going to start off by first just creating a connection to this data. We're not going to try to load the data back into Excel. We're just going to create a connection to it because Power Query fundamentally really tries to, to transform information using Excel tables or other data sources. So I've got a connection to this table here, and now I want to go create a connection to the other table doing the same exact thing. So we're going to do a close load to, and we're going to create connection here. Now I've got, within Excel, I've got two connections to each of these tables. Now I'm going to come back into this feature IDs table. And I want to show you a couple, a couple of neat things about this. I know that we're going to eventually need to take this number that's here and swap it into the other table. If we look here, we have this table over here. We want this to, that value to kind of be swapped into here at some point. So I need to join this information in this table with this table in some way. And to do that, I'm first going to come in and I'm going to prune down the information a little bit. So I'm going to say, I want the item name and also the feature ID, and I'm going to remove the other columns. And I'm going to take this field here and I'm going to transform this. I'm going to change its type into text instead of number field, because we're going to use a, a string replace basically to to merge this stuff together. So if we look at this, you could see here that these steps that are occurring on that table is that it's 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 selected the source, it's changed the types, it's removed the columns, and then it's changed the type here. Now I'm going to add in another column that we're going to actually use to kind of merge this data together. So we'll call this map key name. And the name of that is remove link is what we want to kind of put a record in here for each of these. Now, the reason I'm putting this in here is because I'm going to use this table and this column and this value to kind of merge them together to give us a new column. So we can do that right from here, right within Power Query. So I'm going to say merge queries as a new one. And we're going to use the field IDs and we're going to merge that with our map key table using these two columns on only the matching rows. So that's why we put in this remove link in both of these situations here. So we can actually create a new table. We'll call this final map key. Final map keys is gonna be the name of this. And we'll expand this out and we'll just get the value in here so we can kind of see it. What was that name? So you can see here, here's our item name, our feature ID, uh, the map key name, which we don't need. And this is the raw text of that other table that has been copied in to each row. Now let's go add a new column and we'll call this final map key, or actually let's call this map key sequence. I happen to know that's what we're going to need in the end. And we're going to do a replace text. This is actually a function within Power Query that is really handy. And we're going to use the value. And then we want feet ID is the text that we're going to be replacing in that. And we're going to replace it with our feature ID. We'll close that out. And now if you look, uh, if we click on this, you'll notice that our 40 for our feature ID has actually been, this is the text that we started with. And this is the text that's been replaced. So if we come back over here to this one, See that's 756. This is the geom feet ID that we're looking for, and there it's been replaced. So we're almost done here. The only thing we need to do is really kind of prune this down a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select the item name and the map key sequence. I'm gonna remove the other columns because I don't need those. And I happen to know, because uh, I've done this demo before, um, that pause after sec. We need a pause in here. So this gives Creo enough time to run that map key before we run the next one. So this is really just a sequence of item names and also map keys that are going to run. And then we're going to put a pause in after each of those for three seconds. So let's load this to our worksheet so that we can address it with NitroCell to an existing worksheet. And we're going to put it right here. So 
long and short of this is that we've we've read some data from Creo and we're writing it here. Then we're doing this transformation via Power Query to get to this final table here, which is basically going to take this information and generate the final map key sequences that need to run and also get a pause between each of those. So to reference that, the only thing we need to do is actually say, we're gonna run map key. We're gonna use the table map key option. And it needs the name of that table that we just loaded, which is final, final map keys. Now, if we look at the sequence here, we've got a table create, which is also gonna clear it if it exists the getting of the uh, IDs, and then we have all this Power Query stuff that's going on and then map key. So we need to update Power Query before we do this. So we're gonna do a refresh all. This tells Excel to refresh everything before it runs, make sure this data is correct. And then as a final operation, we're gonna do a regenerate of any model that has been modified. So let's go ahead and run this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say do it, and it's going to repopulate all this stuff and it's already going in and running each of those map keys. You can see the highlighting occurring within the model tree as it goes. So it's pausing for three seconds after each one. Then it's going to go back to our original model. And if we expand this out, you'll notice that if we come in, we don't have our update uh, menu anymore. And also our reference view says there's no parents associated with that feature. So that is how you can do this very, very easily. Uh, with NitroCell, and it is generic. So if we actually, let's say that we uh, quit this process, and I'm gonna open up a completely different model. I grabbed something off the internet. So this is an incomplete design, but it, it also has um, copy geom references, even though the skeleton's not there. But let's watch what happens if we run this. So this is the same exact worksheet that we were working on before. And you'll notice that it's going through each copy geometry within each of these models and running that same map key to uh, disassociate or break those relationships to the skeleton model, which in this case isn't even in the design. So this is just a, a quick example of how to do this. I apologize for the video being so long, but it is a little bit of a uh, process to kind of get this set up. But once it's set up, it's a generic process that you can run across any model that you need to be processing in this fashion.